We're joined by Kurt Tofflin, founder and director of the Shakespeare Behind Bars program. He's in New Zealand as the University of Auckland Creative Fellow. I'm here uh, under the auspices of the University of Auckland's Creative Thinking program. I was named their fifth uh, Creative Fellow and it brought me to Auckland and uh, to work with uh, people in corrections, artists that do work in corrections. So we did a symposium and a panel and uh, I did a workshop, then went up north to, to a prison up north and worked two days in the prison with 15, 16, 16 uh, prisoners on a two-day project and then down to Christ Church where we again did a symposium that included a panel and again I taught uh, a workshop and now here in Wellington where tomorrow I'll be teaching again in the symposium and, and sitting on the panel. But I'm here because of the University of Auckland's creative thinking project. One of the things that we uh, have really been uh, touched by is the Maori culture that we have encountered and uh, when I was working up north in the prison there were a large number of Maori in the population that we were working with with the 16 men and when I came Michelle my wife and I came in uh, to the prison they did this beautiful welcoming haka um, uh, full-on costumes and it was magnificent and then they led us into the pua, and in the pua they stood around and sang their traditional songs to us. And we then had an opportunity to say something back, and I put a poem into the middle of the circle. And, um, and then we were ready to work and spent two days working together. We were together the whole day. With the, uh, it was great that the prison allowed us to be with the men. We had tea with them. We had lunch with them. Um, and we uh, eventually found our way into a little bit of Shakespeare, Hamlet's to be or not to be speech, and the men worked on that, and they came to understand it. And uh, then they uh, divvied up into three teams, and each team took 11 lines of this uh, monologue and performed it, and in the end, they did a piece of Shakespeare. So uh, they're giving us their beautiful traditions and beautiful culture and, 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 and just great sense of, of, of connection to the spirits and to the ancestors and to the land was has really touched us very very deeply. I've always believed uh, that I was an artist at a very young age. Uh, third grade I decided I was a poet, started writing poetry and started playing the trumpet in the all-school band and uh, moved from there into singing and, and from there into theater so I've been involved in, in the arts since I was a very, very young person and decided that uh, I wanted a career in the arts, uh, primarily in theater. Um, and then in theater, I got in introduced to Shakespeare and fell in love with Shakespeare and had an opportunity to be the producing artistic director at Kentucky Shakespeare Festival in Kentucky, where uh, we're the oldest free professional Shakespeare Festival in North America. And I created an education program that served kindergarten through 12th grade students. And uh, as a part of that work, I was working with Shakespeare with kids in middle school, kids that were having a difficult time because of learning challenges or behavioral challenges. Uh, but they were my favorite population to work with uh, and had was having a pretty good impact on them and then had an opportunity to go to an adult prison um, and on the back of another program called uh, Books Behind Bars, which was a literacy-based program. And from that then, uh, in 1995, I started a program called Shakespeare Behind Bars, which is now in its 20th year. We were fortunate that uh, there was a documentary made of Shakespeare Behind Bars by Philomath Films, and it's an award-winning documentary that started its life at the 2005 Sundance Film Festival and then traveled around the world to 40 different film festivals, won 11 awards, still has an ongoing life even though it's 10 years after that film festival premiere. Um, in that documentary, which follows us for one year as we're rehearsing a production of The Tempest. Uh, Shakespeare Behind Bars performs a full Shakespeare production each year. They work on the play for a year and then we perform it. Um, men playing the women's roles, 
uh, costumes, sets, minimal costumes and sets. Um, and we do performances for the prison population and we do performances for the members of the company's family and then we do some public performances for invited guests. And there's uh, one female character in The Tempest and that's Prospero's daughter Miranda. And the guy that played Miranda would always come to rehearsal uh, with his lines memorized. And I used him then as an example saying to the rest of the guys that I really appreciated Red's commitment to uh, the rehearsal process and how impressed I was that he was always off book and ready to go and that we should all attempt to emulate his dedication. One day he arrived uh, for rehearsal and his scene partner wasn't there. So I said, well, it's no big deal. He'll be along in a bit. Let's jump to a different scene. And Red started to get a little bit nervous and fidgety and said, well, uh, I haven't rehearsed uh, another scene. And I said, well, that's okay. You can just take your script and you can just read it. And we know you haven't uh, worked on it, so it's not going to be memorized. And it's perfectly all right. But he was still nervous. He said, well, I, I don't have my script with me. So one of the other men gave him the script and told him what page it was on. He started paging his way through the script, more and more nervous. And suddenly I realized that he probably had a hard time reading. Uh, so I, I stopped and him and I said, Red, I said, um, you don't read very well, do you? And his head, face, eyes went to the floor and all the shame that he felt um, having been in school and being made fun of for not being a good reader, etc., and all of that trauma that he'd carried. Um, he said, no. And I told him to lift his face up, look at the man, that he was a hero. It was courageous that there was such nobility in the fact that he had this challenge and he solved the problem because he came ready to work. Then I asked him, how on earth did you memorize your lines? And he said, well, he said, I swore my bunkie to secrecy. And when we were together, I would sit beside him and he'd open up the script and he'd point to the word and he would read the word and then I would repeat the word and I'd look at the word and I would practice over and over and over again. And then at three o'clock in the morning when the whole prison is sleeping, I'd turn on my little reading light and I would practice what he had taught me. The will to overcome. That's what Shakespeare Behind Bars is about. Miracles happen every day. Not just that one, but so many, many miracles I get to witness. I'm really blessed to do the work.